Wealth generation, it's important to build with balance. Um, this is talking about, well, it's, it's different, different investments, different things. First thing is your salary. A salary is an investment in yourself. It's your weekly page, your monthly page, your regular pay. That's something you rely on. That's your bills, that's your A to B, that's your um, getting through life stuff. But then you can get into investments that are five years, 10 years, two years, whatever. They're more longer term. Um, I say look at those for the return on investment, see if they're worthwhile. Then you've got things like crypto, where Bitcoin's now heading towards or above $6,000. Um, my personal view on crypto, I think we're seeing the gold rush or the uh, the stock market of the 1920s uh, in America, where everybody's getting in on it now and it's going to start booming, but there'll be a risk with the whole thing or just the bubble will burst in probably about two years. Um, the only way that would actually change is if more businesses come into it to stabilize the market. Um, but we'll wait and see. I, I mean, I, but I mean that's that's one that that's going up on a daily basis. And what, what I try to do is spread a mixed bag of investments. I've got some investments that pay me daily. I've got some investments that pay me monthly. Some of them um, are annual. Some I just invest in, keep rolling it, rolling the interest, and just forget about them. I'm not going back there for the next ten years. Um, I think. When you're looking at investments, the main thing is, is deciding what you want out of it, when you want out of it, and is it worth it? Because a lot of the ones I know with the banks and stuff these days are absolutely worthless. Um, but there is other investments out there. Uh, Brick Lane, for example, um, where you invest in property, has, a, I think, it's something about 8% a year interest. Um, I do peer-to-peer -peer lending, I get up to a maximum of 10.4%, but you should expect around 6%. Um, like I said with the Bitcoin, Bitcoin's one of those ones where I think it's probably about four months ago, it was sitting at 3,200 after a major crash due to them talking about forking it, um, and now it's sitting at 6,000, so you've done nearly doubled your money if you've done absolutely nothing beyond buying some crypto. Uh, buying some Bitcoin. So, far, far, part of this is actually realizing you should be investing in things because interest, you're either making it or paying it. It's as simple as that. There's no getting away from it. You're either paying somebody the interest or you're earning it from the other parties. Um, so, investing in yourself and investing in your future and building your own retirement program and all that sort of stuff is stuff that's not really encouraged that much these days, but it should be. What is encouraged is credit cards, mortgage, all the stuff that the banks love making money off you for. Because obviously with a mortgage, you're locked into it. It's a 25-year you know, commitment, a 10-year commitment or whatever, where the banks own you. And they, you can't disappear with the bricks and mortar. They, they own the house. You know? And this is the thing. They would want you in those sort of investments because they can lock you into it. Is property worth investing in? Not always, but sometimes yes. Here in Spain, they talk about a property boom um, from the retirement age people. Uh, reality is, I don't think it's changed at all. I think it's more a case of they're still coming here and they will come in here anyway. Um, I also know that some of the developments aren't at what they seem. There is contracts coming up for expiring that were planned or before the recession. So like say you've got this bit of land and you have a construction project with it. The government's agreed to let you construct houses. Well there's a window that you have to complete those houses by. If you don't you lose that contract that you spent a small fortune on and it takes a lot of time to put together. So they're building empty houses. Um, there's a lot of houses that have no owners. There's a lot of houses that may actually become cheap simply because the developers will still want to sell them but a lot of these guys are not going to get what they expect simply because they're actually helping create a excessive housing market because um, there's already too many houses and building these new ones that they're being forced to because they've got their contracts expiring 
Um, and it makes it worse. But I do know that some of these ones will actually deal with the banks directly. And if you can pay the taxes and the agency fees and get through the door, they'll, some of these guys will give them to you. Um, because they're going to make it off you anyway, let's be honest. I mean, if I had an apartment that cost me 40,000 euros to construct and I'm selling it to you for 120 and you pay your taxes and your deposit and whatever, I've got most of my money back just in that. Never mind you paying it off for the next 15 years. Um, but there you go, there's an investment. Um, even in construction or developments, there is money to be made. A lot of properties have had no maintenance, renovations or anything for a long period of time. And the thing is, a lot of these properties, if you can do it yourself, there's money to be made. Some of the videos on the Alicante channel, you see some of the properties have been renovated. Um, the reality is, if they're not being maintained, not being fixed, and like this one we're in at the minute, it needs a lot of work doing to it, um, they're devaluing it by at least 30,000 euros. The big problem you have here in Spain is the 10% tax to the state when you transfer the, the ownership. But at the same time, that's part of life, taxes. And I'm sure there's ways around it as a corporation um, to avoid paying that tax whatsoever. Um, but the point being, in all of this, is you should be looking at opportunities where you can make some money. Um, you, everything's an investment of some description. It doesn't mean you have to buy stocks and shares. I mean, I've mentioned before about the socks I used to buy when I worked on the construction uh, because people get wet feet. Now, I was buying like three packs of socks for £3.50, then selling the socks on. I can't even remember how much of this I was selling them for. So I was buying jeans at £1.25 a pair, selling them for £5. And because of £5, people got, everyone's got £5 on the construction site. So you sell them very easily. Um, but that's an investment. I'd go and pick them up every week, leave them in their car, and then people come and buy them when they got soaking wet when it rained. Very easy to do, easy money. Um, same in the cold weather, people want an extra pair of socks or whatever, sell them winter socks. Um, but it's an investment. The return on investment is very good because you already know the market's there. Um, but a part of the problem today is people don't think about this stuff. They're often doing it the wrong way around because everything's geared to you being in debt, not for you being in uh, profit, not for you being in. Uh, having a lot of liquid equity in whatever, it's all for you to actually owe the credit card, owe the mortgage, have a bank overdraft, give them all your money instead of them actually saying, we can offer you this, we can offer you this because you've got money in the bank. Um, and the thing is, once you get to that other side, life's so much easier having no credit card interest and no mortgage to pay and these sort of things because you're ahead of the game. Because everyone else is surviving and paying this stuff off. You're paying it off early or managed to pay it off through an investment or whatever, which means that you can knock 10 years of mortgage off because you're paying it off quickly, because you're paying it off at a faster rate in a way that the banks don't like. Um, this is why, I mean, here in Spain, I spoke to the bank about it and it says you will get a penalty for paying it early. Um, but that's what I'm gearing up to because I want rid of the debt. I don't want any debt. Um, but I will be looking at the tax incentives on where I can put it to my benefit because you can actually get tax deduction on renovations and things like that. So there is ways to manipulate the system to your own benefit. And that's another thing is to look at how you can reduce what you're spending on things because you may find that you're overpaying your tax. Spend, go and speak to your accountant. Your accountant's always got stuff that he could help you invest in. He's always got ideas. That's what their job is. They'll find ways for you to make money if you, if you ask them to. They may charge you more later, but at the same time, any good accountant will actually make you more money than they're costing you. That's what they're there for. Thanks for watching.